Hello, welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Agaji. Welcome to the seventh day of the eighth the month. Eighth, <laughs> the eighth day? Oh, the eighth day. Yes. Is it day it's eighth day already. Oh, Don't take us know. back here and go. <laughs> okay, welcome to the eighth day of the eighth month. Mm -hmm. in uh, the year 2024 we're glad to know that you're there and alive mm -hmm. it's very important alive yes mm -hmm. in fact today is my dad's birthday and that's how i know it's definitely the eighth oh, day so happy, happy birthday, birthday daddy happy birthday <laughs> to Rumi's daddy yes oh. you're such an amazing father i want to say thank you for all that you do for us and our family so happy birthday to you daddy yeah 0808 <laughs> These are, these are some of the things that we take for granted. You have mm -hmm. your father around. Some people don't even call them for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And for some of us who lost our dads before the advent of phones, that's one of the things I miss most. I wonder, like, how would it have been if my father were there and I could just put a call through to my mm -hmm. father and say, Daddy, how are you doing? Good morning and all that. I know. Mommy, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. We never got that opportunity oh, and um, they're gone already. You bless. never know what you're missing mm -hmm. uh, or what you're yeah what you're missing out until yeah. that time happens when you don't get to see them again yeah so shout out to all the daddies who are real daddies mm -hmm. and all the mommies who are real mommies yeah because uh, some can be yeah. somehow and i think i want to add that it is super important that you let people know how much you love them yes so a lot of times we take it for granted like you said we just move by with our days and feel like you know what it's fine but if you Especially have if a parent money yeah if you have a parent in a your life if you have someone in your life that is still um showing that love and care it is important that you show them how much you appreciate that mm -hmm. and and for my dad, he does a lot. In fact, I call him my central bank. Yeah. <laughs> so happy birthday, daddy. Thank you, know. you so much for being my central bank. Thank you so much for being, <laughs> being the person. Yes, yeah, so being my, my sense of reasoning um, in a lot of times, especially when it comes to businesses. It's almost like my business partner as well. So happy birthday once again, daddy. Thank you so much. Mm. All right, let's move to today's breakfast show. Thank you so much for joining us. On today's breakfast show, we'll be having several hot topics, one of which federal government spends $600 million monthly on fuel importation, and that is being said by the finance minister, Wale Edu. Another is that Pabi should resign over protest comments, APC Chieftain says. We'll also be taking global stories that make headlines in our national daily, as well as the top stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. In the business world, everyone is paid in two coins, cash and experience. Take the experience first, the cash will come later. And that is by Harold S. Genin, is the CEO of International Telephone and Telegraph Corporation. And he says this morning in the business world, everyone is paid in two coins, cash and experience. Take the experience first, the cash will come later i think that is such a vital um quote this morning because mm -hmm. if we're talking about business a lot of times people think i want to make my money now mm -hmm. and we kind of live in a microwave generation whereby everyone wants everything right now you're forgetting mm -hmm. the processes you're forgetting the experience you're going to garner along the way 
and you think money is the only reward but most times money is not just the only reward it is amazing for you to get money out of anything you do i mean i am uh, an advocate for making money out of your passion but still get that experience along the way don't think the cash is going to come now and this is so apt because i was having a conversation with one of our colleagues here on tuesday I, on monday i presume and he was like rume do not think of the money right now because working on a project and it's like Rume I understand how much you want to do this project but do not think that it is just the money you want to get you might get the money later on but as of right now try your best to ensure that you get this thing off the ground in as much as you want the money invest everything you want and get the experience along the way and that is what it is you don't just say i want to get all of the money take the experience and money will, because most times even people are being head hunted for jobs and why are you being head on Ted? Because you have the experience. Mm -hmm. Not just because we have a lot of cash to give you. Do you understand mm -hmm. my point? So it is important that you take the experience and that experience will start to yield fruits, you know, in the nearest future. It's like, just like the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. That's, right. that's what experience, experience does for you. Uh, take, for instance, this job we do as broadcasters and all that. You, your first job may not be very well paying, yeah. but you garner the experience. And after that, you practically walk to every, every organization that employs you without a, even as much as writing an application. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you said, the head haunt. Mm -hmm. People come to poach you from where you are because you're good enough, you have the experience. And all right. That. It happens everywhere. Your first job especially may not be as well paying mm -hmm. as uh, you want it to be, but if you get the experience, if you see it as a school, an extension of school, mm -hmm. and then you are going to get the experience. Some people, even when they're doing internship, all they're thinking about is money. Mm. It has to be somewhere that I can get a lot of money. It has to be this and that. And so they do a lot of things that will not help them concentrate on the job they're doing that yeah. will give them the relevant experience. And it doesn't all go well for talking them. About, talking about internship, I remember when I started this job, I knew I had the talent, but I did not have the skill to match. And I didn't mind interning anywhere as long as I can have that experience. Mm -hmm. And getting the experience, I know that it will pay off later on because mm -hmm. I'm learning. In fact, I should be, I should be the one paying it. It's right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the in thing. Yeah. You gather the experience and every other thing will be added on to you. You don't, mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just walking to somewhere. People will tell people about you because mm -hmm. you can do why is that you've, the, get, you've gotten the experience and so when when you find when you find artisans for instance you find that nigerian artisans i'm using my people because i know that is a, a, a thing that we do here my people do not want to study maybe you want to be a seamstress six months you want to open your own shop mm -hmm. they don't want to learn even mechanics all of them like all they feel them. like I, uh, the moment i know a few things Yes, I can go and start my own. Those customers, hey, you come to the other corner and mm. do this thing for a little bit less, so that you can begin to get the money. But people come from other countries that took time to learn. Mm -hmm. The tailors stay there. Some of them stay up to three years. They are mm. learning. They they know everything. They serve their masters. Sometimes the master begins to pay them even because yeah. they become so good mm -hmm. before they That's how the it freedom. Should be. Uh, so That's how it should be. People should be patient enough to learn and get the experience. All right, let's move over to our top trending stories this morning. This first one says, Tinubu has appealed to Nigerians, focus on future, not current struggles. President Bola Tinubu has pleaded with Nigerians to be patient with his administration, assuring them that the country is transitioning from darkness to dawn. In an official video released by the State House on Wednesday, Tinubu acknowledged the ongoing hardships orchestrated by the removal of the fuel subsidy and the floating of the Naira. He noted that Nigerians' pain was compounded by what he described as an avoidable lag between the subsidy removal and his helpful plans for the country. He said, in quote, fellow Nigerians, this period may be hard on us and there is no doubt that it is tough. But I, I urge you all to look beyond the present temporary pains and aim at the larger picture. All our good and helpful plans are in the works. More importantly, I know that they will work. Sadly, there was an avoidable lag between subsidy removal and these plans coming fully online. I plead with you, please have faith in our ability to deliver and our concern for your well-being. We will get out of this turbulence and due to the measures we have taken, Nigeria will be better equipped and be able to take advantage of the future that awaits her. 
For example, we shall fulfill our promise to make education more affordable to all and provide loans to higher education students who may need them. No Nigerian student will have to abandon higher education due to lack of money. Our commitment is to promote the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. On principle, we shall never falter. I assure you, my fellow countrymen and women, that we are ex exiting the darkness into a new and glorious dawn. Now I must get back to work in order to make this vision come true. The president assured that the measures his government has taken would get the country out of the lingering economic crisis. For me, I feel like this should have been that speech he gave on Sunday. It is more reassuring. It is something that you would expect a president to say because you know that as a leader, you want to ensure that your people know that you are empathetic towards them. This sounds more like, okay, I understand what you're going through, but don't worry, there is light at the end of the tunnel. But when you come and you sound boastful and you say, we've done X, Y, Z, um, don't worry, but you're, you're not really saying don't worry. You're kind of like talking about your accomplishments, like things that you've achieved in one year. Even though people are suffering right now, they don't care about Some all of those things. making people go, to go on the streets, if yeah. you ask me, because those things you're boasting that you have done are the same things that are making people so hungry mm -hmm. and angry, and you just come to say, I, like you said, this is, this is part of the speech that he should have made, yeah. <clears throat> and I don't know why. It is two days or three days after, uh, after that that he's making this speech again mm -hmm. trying to correct the uh, so i feel so, like it's a pr like they're so, trying to ch so check it don't out they even think through what they put on paper for him to read because i'm sure he didn't write the speech someone wrote it he has had he, he must have had some uh, inputs to it but he mm -hmm. has the aids that uh, write speech um why didn't they think about this thing to incorporate those kind of things in the speech in the mm -hmm. first place that he made yeah you know it it, it worries me when that first speech came out, someone was looking at the video and saying, it doesn't even seem like the president is in the country. It's like he recorded this speech from somewhere else and he pointed out some things that made him feel that way. Mm -hmm. And now they're releasing yet another video, mm -hmm. like he's somewhere just talking to Nigeria. For me, I feel like this second video is just damage control. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the first speech, saying it was, it lacked empathy. The president just did not you know highlight several things even what Wale Shoink has said that as well it was like and an independent speech yeah. right? really, okay not independent um, democracy days yeah. he was reading out what he had done first, mm -hmm. first hundred days in office <laughs> like they do yeah. that's what he was saying yeah. and people are not happy with those same policies you should have just reassured us mm -hmm. and said okay we will review we will look at these things even if you are not going to do it but let us know that you are listening to us and you are thinking about it and then suddenly, boom, we'll just see the results coming. And say, That's why I said, you know they're trying to do damage control right now. Anyways, we hope that the policies, um, you know, will definitely come to fruition. As we have said, we hope that hopefully in the, in the nearest future, we'll start to see all of this. The second uh, hot, uh, top trending issue Actually, we're yeah. going to address is the worrisome one. The World Health Organization, WHO, uh, said it was considering convening an expert committee to advise on whether to declare an international emergency as it did during the global mpox outbreak or monkeypox outbreak in, the, in 2022. Two years after a global outbreak, fears arrive that a new strain of monkeypox, previously known as monkeypox, identified, or, yes, identified in DR Congo and now also in several neighboring countries could further spread. The clade IB strain uh, causes skin rashes across the whole body. Unlike other strains where well, lesions and uh, rashes are usually limited to the mouth, face and genitals. The African Union Health Agency, Africa CDC, registered 14,479 confirmed and suspected cases of the strain and 455 deaths in DRC as of August, representing a mortality rate of around 3%. Although researchers in the vast Central African nation say the mortality rate from the strain can be as much as 10% among children, East African community has urged governments to educate their citizens on how to protect themselves and prevent the spread of the disease. Hmm. Like they say, prevention is better than cure. It may not be uh, a case where they are saying it has entered Nigeria, 
uh, but to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Yeah. And I hope that the government will be doing something to make sure that it doesn't arrive in the mm. first place. I think we need to be more preventive because a lot mm. of times you're hearing of outbreaks like this. Mm. So whatever we can do to prevent it, not when it comes, then we're trying to fix the yeah. issue. I know that, you know, having to have a clean environment, personal hygiene, all of that plays a major role um, when it comes to outbreaks like this. I mean, we see how um, COVID-19 came and what happened. So we don't even want a situation whereby there would be a repeat of what has happened in the past. So if we can have preventive measures to ensure that you know, this doesn't come into Nigeria, that would be great. If we need to start screening more people at the airport, if we need to start checking all of the food, because I know sometimes it is even being transmitted in things like bush meat and, you mm. know, all those things that you're eating and you're not even sure of the source or how it was being prepared. So all of that, we need to be extra careful at this time. There are so many things out there, so many. I mean, we saw how Ebola came as well. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that have, that have happened. So now is the time to understand that it, anything can come in. Mm. So what are you doing to prevent that from happening? Yeah, like in Nasarawa State, the report that we saw yesterday was that five children died in the space of 24 hours in one community. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had eaten something that was yeah. not good enough. Uh, maybe it was something, an outbreak that has come. But they, they keep saying it's three illness has come into that. I don't know why it's There's always so like that. A strange illness. We're still talking about still, cholera uh, right now. So there are so many things that um, we need to put it out there. Some people do not even know the essence of like the hygiene you were talking about. Yeah. We just we just are careless about whatever happens. You mm. say you are an African or like Zebudaya will say that Gems have no business in Africa man's mm -hmm. belly. In fact, <laughs> that is not there's, true. There's a, there's a colloquial language <laughs> that says, Deti no de kill African man. So say. they will tell you that I can eat anything and I'm still fine. I can pick stuff. I mean, did you see that video sometime? Was it last year or two years ago that the, there was a, a vendor that was selling fruits and he was washing the fruits in with gutter, gutter, yes. in the gutters? Yes, so things that. like this, our personal hygiene matters a lot for me personally what i do even when i buy fruits i just don't eat them i have to wash them properly i wash them in salt and vinegar to be able to kill off the germs so from your fresh fruits to your vegetables you have to wash them properly because you don't even know the hands that have touched them mm -hmm. you don't know the flies that have gone around from sewages and have come to perch on them you don't know how that vendor you know washed and preserved that there's no so vendor that will go and buy pure water to go and wash of vegetables course not. they will wash with the cheapest yeah. kind of water yeah so it's it will be left for you to now do the needful and wash it well you can, because you're your first doctor so you know what is good for you. So it's important that, you know, if you're using lemon, if you're using anything that, you know, would help clean those fruits and vegetables very well, then you should. And talking about bush meat and all those things, you need to be careful. Yeah. Even the things you buy on the road, you know, with street hawkers, you need to be careful because you don't know what you're eating. So it is important, personal hygiene, what you're putting in your body, super important. And we hope that monkeypox doesn't come tonight. And as much as possible, do your own cooking. Yeah. Do your own cooking True. as much as possible. There are, there are places you will eat. You don't know what they used. And you have how food they it's easy yes. to have food poisoning. Cook your own thing. And if it is possible, uh, plant your own vegetables if mm -hmm. that is possible. If it is not possible, uh, yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. But if it is possible, plant it in your backyard anywhere. Don't wait for the first lady to advise you to do that. <laughs> it's not even only because of hunger that is mm -hmm. in the land that you need to do this. Because you are sure... Of what of, you're eating yes, and what you're, you're putting what you're in eating. your body. So be, be mindful. It's not all the time that you think of yourself that I'm so rich, I'm so well-to-do that I don't have... I, I, yes, store. so that people will another, not say another, I'm a bushman. Yeah, I know, I know this is going off tangent. But another thing is we're eating so many processed foods and... Our life expect expectancy is not as you know long as it used to be because mm -hmm. you're eating so many processed foods, the, the air you're breathing. We're not really taking care of our bodies the way we should be. So planting your own food does that for you because you're sure of the manure, you're sure of the fertilizers, you're sure of everything that is you know that made that crop what it is. So it is important that if you can, if you have you know a very large expanse of land. Why not have your own orchard? Even a small place, you have you have uh, uh, paint rubbers in your house. You mm -hmm. have some other things that you, you can, can just have, your have peppers, some. Yes, tomatoes and you know at least the basic vegetables. things to be sure of what you're eating. Some people now they show is is a, a matter of status. You want to show that I can afford pizza mm -hmm. and. 
there's nothing like pizza when you're talking about a, a bowl of food like you're eating your amala and you're eating your vegetable soup and all mm -hmm. that pizza will not give you even 50 percent of what that will give you mm -hmm. so it's it's very crazy to think that to show that you're a big man you have to eat those processed foods because you go to an eatery you have uh, some buns you have some pizza you have some this and that mm -hmm. no eat as natural as possible yeah. and eat as healthy as possible all right, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be taking global stories that made headlines in our national dailies this morning. Please stay with us.